The head of the army has launched a scathing attack against reports that weapons used by our armed forces are faulty. Last night it was reported an investigation uncovered a number of complaints about defective rifles, pistols and grenade launchers. But Lieutenant General Peter Lay says there are no systemic issues with regard to weapons of soldiers serving in the Middle East. Channel 7's so-called investigative report is based on t entirely selective an exaggerated use of information gained from a freedom of information request on the 13th of August this year. I also last night provided Channel 7 with 30 minutes of my time on camera in an attempt to explain the reports and to provide some balance. They chose not to use any of this material in their report last night and this morning. Peter Lay says there are bound to be problems with weapons and machinery used in desert conditions. The harsh operational and climatic conditions, the extent and range of weapons and equipment in use and the level, level of activity, these figures are considered to be within normal operational ranges. Labor has called for an immediate audit. Well, joining us now on the line is Brigadier Andrew Nicolic, spokesman for the Australian Defence Force. Uh, thanks very much for joining us today. I guess people want to know, is there a problem with weaponry in the Australian Defence Force? Uh, good morning. Uh, look, we would argue that 31 reports over two years in a large, complex environment like the Middle East actually supports our view that we have high-quality weapons and equipment and that we respond effectively when there are faults reported. Is that a consistent rate based on past experience in the ADF? Look, um, the majority of the faults in these 31 reports over two years were discovered uh, during range practices, during routine maintenance or technical inspections. It's a system that works, our people are confident in it and we encourage them to report all faults and suggestions for improvement and when they do, uh, we act on it. To go to the statistics, for example, um, the unit which submitted one fault, uh, a report on styes in December 2006, used 400 weapons over a four-month operational period in very harsh conditions and during this time spring kits were replaced in only 14 weapons. Now, that's not excessive and it's considered part of the normal repair and maintenance regime. I'll ask the question again, though. That rate of complaint and problem, is that consistent with past um, difficulties in this regard that the ADF has experienced? Yeah, look, the rate of fault is uh, no higher or lower uh, than what you would experience in uh, you know, normal usage of weapons in, in training, for example, and in much harsher conditions. The numbers are not significant uh, in comparison to our large holdings of weapons and equipment. As I said, it's 31 fault reports over two years in a large, complex environment like the Middle East. Uh, there were the figures that came out from Channel 7, which does sound really alarming when they provide six uh, main weapon mounts and six of them are faulty, or, or eight uh, machine guns and eight are faulty. It's really hard for people to um, feel that there perhaps isn't a problem, though. Well, this is raw data, and we consider that Channel 7 has used the raw data in these reports selectively and in an exaggerated way. There are over 2,000 people, uh, approximately, who serve in the Middle East, uh, remember that the uh, information we gave them covered two years in a large, harsh environment like the Middle East and 31 reports over two years, given hundreds of thousands of line items of equipment and weapons, is not a large number. So if it's all not much of a problem, as you're trying to portray to us, why, have you, why has Defence gone back to the manufacturer of the Steyr rifle and, and asked it to, to test the rifle to the point of destruction to see where these problems lie? Well, it's not a rifle that's being tested to the point of destruction. What we do uh, cooperatively with industry is that when we do identify a, uh, a fault and we do ask our soldiers to report faults on weapons... This is, you see, this is the problem. You're, you're saying to us that there's, there's really no... You're trying to say that there's no problem and there's no difference to past rates of failure in defence, but, but you're saying there are. And no, you've got to so, back to the manufacturer. No problems. We're saying that the rate of problems, given the enormous equipment and weapon holding, holdings, is not significant. I mean, there are over 75,000 Steyr rifles on issue with the Australian Defence Force. Yeah, I, I accept that, but why would you go back to the manufacturer then? Well, uh, in a harsh environment that we're talking about in Afghanistan and Iraq, in Afghanistan, for example, in the depths of winter, uh, temperatures go to 20 below. In Iraq, you have temperatures uh, in, in the height of summer regularly in excess of 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, where there are faults, 
for example, on this occasion with the spring system, um, then we will either try and repair that in theatre or that fault report will be provided back through the chain of command in Australia and we will engage, our experts will engage people to ensure that we get the quickest possible fix. Now, that is a system that's succeeding. It's a system where faults are reported, people feel comfortable enough with the system to report those faults and action is taken when those reports are received. So you're saying it's the extreme conditions which are the problem, and is that correct? Well, these are operational conditions. Uh, th these are conditions where the soldiers are using uh, weapons in a very harsh environment, often in dusty, uh, uh, hot or cold environments, uh, and they do contribute uh, to some of these faults. There's no doubt about that. But I would put it to you that 31 reports over two years in a large difficult and harsh environment, as you find in the Middle East, is not excessive when you consider the number of people and the no amount of equipment that we employ in that theatre. Having said that, the manufacturer then just, I guess, says to you, well, it's the conditions you're using and there's, that's your problem. Absolutely not. There, there is a co cooperative uh, relationship with industry and with the provider of some of our weapons. A lot of these faults are actually fixed up in theatre. The majority of these faults are picked up by users during range practices, routine maintenance or technical inspections and the vast majority when you read these reports are actually fixed uh, you know, in theatre by armourers, by highly qualified people having had the problem brought to their attention by our professional young soldiers, sailors and airmen. Where there is an issue that needs additional assistance, well that's when we uh, you know, put that up to the people who are providing us some of this equipment. Brigadier Andrew Nikolic, thank you very much for shedding some light on that today. Appreciate your time here on Sky News. You're very welcome.